Now let's return to the issue of knives for more. On this, we can speak now to two men uh, who are involved in grassroots efforts in Sheffield to combat the growth of knife crime. Anthony Olasande, uh, his work in the community led to him establishing the Anti-Violence Keep Sheffield Stainless campaign. And as part of that work, Anthony's collaborated with Terence Campbell and the two have joined forces on a project to address the public perception of violence in grime music on organising a special anti-knife crime club night which uh, I think got underway last week, but let's find out more about this. They both uh, join me now. Thanks very much for your time. I, I just want to start, uh, if I might, with you, Anthony, because what is it about grime drill music that so many people, in fact, there's, there's a special programme on BBC London tonight looking at the link of this, this type of music and knife crime. It, it gets a bad press. I think it's because they talk about um, the life, what they're living in grime and drill music, and if if they're living that sort of life, then that's what they're going to talk about. You know, it's it's up to the people that are listening and the parents that are allowing their kids to listen to this music to make a judgment on if that's okay or not for their kids to be influenced by this sort of music. And um, you, I think, you insist that there there's no language that might be seen to to encourage any sort of attacks like this when you play the music? Um, there, there might be some lyrics there, you know, but as I said, it's their life, you know. You watch soaps, you see a lot a lot worse on soaps. Do you watch your favourite soap and act out the scenes that you see? No, you don't. You need to understand right from wrong. And Terence, we're, we're talking about Sheffield because, I mean, there have been eight deaths through knife crime there this year as well. There, there is no part of this country which isn't affected and everybody... Who, who doesn't understand what goes on, is at a loss as to, as to how to stop it. I mean, what advice do you give? Uh, I mean, I don't know exactly, like, there's no one root answer, but I definitely think things like this, like giving youth opportunities and things to do where we can engage with them and keep our eye on them. So I think there's an element, not just the youth, but the parents as well. So, I mean, while ever we're involved and we can keep an eye on what they're doing and mediate what's going on, um, then I think that's, that's adding to part of the solution, for sure. But the fact that you two are just sitting there now suggests that it's this, this crucial issue of having male role models. And again, the, the music has an influence, but it, it, many people say there's a lack of any influence within a family or without groups like yours setting up, and, th and that's the root of the problem for many young men. I think that's um, that's definitely part of it. I think what we wanted to show is it's all good and um, pointing at the youth, but I mean there's a part of this where the grown-ups have to take responsibility. And that's why we did the event, how we did it, so that parents could come with the youth and understand the popular culture that their kids are into and, you know, start getting involved and help guide them to the future again. Put them at ease. Also backed up with other workshops, educational workshops, to help give them skills and experiences that they can use in other parts of their life as well. Yeah. Anthony, you said put them at ease. Do you think it does? You what, sorry? Do, uh, I was talking to Anthony, I just wonder if, if anything does put parents at ease when they hear this sort of thing. I think I think it's a good it's good to know, you know, what you should want to take an interest in what your child does. You know, they they play football, you go to the football match, you go to the football matches, you support them, um, they listen to the music. Why not you, you know, think that they're getting up to badness by listening to this music. The event was there so you could first hand come and see that y your child is in this venue and it is not what you may think it is like. You put a, almost put at ease because you will see first hand that it's not what um, is glamorised on the TV. And Terence, when it comes to the young people, and uh, many of them feel they need a knife. They need to, if they feel want to feel safe on the streets, that having a knife is just part of standard protection. Is, is that the experience? I mean, well, you're not, you're shaking your head, Anthony, but Terence, is that the experience that you come across? Uh, not, not all, the, I mean, a, a lot of the stigma comes through media, I believe. Like, I don't think there is, there is a lot of kids carrying knives for protection. We, we can't hide from that. But I think there is a lot of kids out there, actually, that are saying, no, I'm going to take a stance. I'm not carrying a knife and I don't want no involvement in knife crime. But I think the stigma and the rumours that fly around has everybody panicked and thinking that actually every single kid is walking around with a knife with the aim of stabbing each other. However, I will say there is a, hell of, uh, a lot more children now that are carrying these for protection than they used to be, definitely. And Anthony, I mean, you're both, you're both there in a BBC studio talking to me, but it, it, for you, does that actually get to those whose message they need to hear this? I mean, 
Well, is there a generation gap? What is the gap here where so many of us don't understand what's going on on our own streets? Oh, it is, we're here, um, hope we've, well, I'm here, and I'm sure Terence is as well. We want to get parents on board, you know? That we, we can do all we can with the youth that are able to get to us. And we, that's our job, you know. We're passionate about making a difference for these youths. We're trying to educate them on what will happen if they get caught with a knife. We, we've got means to do that. Um, us, well, yeah, being here is for, for the parents, like, look, you don't need to be worried, you know. We're here doing what we can. Come on board, find out what we're doing, find out what we're about. Can you help? You know, your kids are growing up mm. in, in, in this day and age. You, you could guide them to, towards us. And Terence, if that doesn't happen, if the parents aren't there, presumably there's a, there's a vacuum and that is where gangs, that's where those who would like to take advantage of these, these young men, that's where that vacuum is created. I think that's the part of this that everybody misses as well. Everybody's here blaming music and everything, but all of this stuff's been around for years and we've not had as nearly as much violence as we're seeing now. And I think the part of this event was to, to, to showcase exactly what we're talking about now, that we should get behind, these, uh, behind the young ones, we should support them. The fact that we had parents in there mixed with toddlers and teens, it all added to the value of the event because everybody was looking after each other, the community came together. If anybody got a bit rowdy, they said, look, hang on, we've got younger ones here and that's exactly how it should be instead of running away from it and saying I'm going to turn a blind eye to it because it doesn't it doesn't change anything but by embracing it and mediating it definitely and also, Anthony, for me, sorry for me sorry may I add that you know it, as a parent you have to ask yourself is your child vulnerable to this you know when they finish school and they're hanging on the streets or they're just playing with the friends they are vulnerable they're at risk and this is what we're trying to trying to show that yeah they might only be playing to your friends but if you play so many times in the same area people might pick up on this and then and this is the vulnerability is real but 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 how do you how do you then respond if you're you if you're worried as a parent that that is happening if you just go to the school gates and wait for them or whatever that 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 can be counterproductive can't it how do you how do you manage that situation and how do you get your son sometimes your daughter, how do you get them not to feel that you're becoming interfering and becoming part of the problem? I think, it, I think that is a fair point that you've made, but I think it's about everybody playing their part. So the thing that me and Anthony are doing, we're just literally playing a part. Aside from this, I'm a youth leader as well in the area of Sheffield, and part of my role is to try and put workshops and other opportunities out there available so youth can engage with them. Uh, the other part of that pu uh, puzzle is the parents getting involved, going out there, sourcing out these opportunities, opportunities sorry, mm. and getting them engaged with them. I think it's, like I said, it's a thing where we all need to come together yeah. to help solve this problem. We can only do our part and put the opportunities out there, but in the past we've had kids uh, do work experience with us and then gone on to university and all of that type of stuff. So we can't help every child, but the fact that there is things out there for them, the more that youth are engaging with that, the less that they're out on the streets. The same like with when me and Anthony were younger, because we had things to do, and now look at us, business owners and doing well for ourselves. But, and, and, and many people watching you will have full respect for that. But finally, Anthony, just this club night, I mean, it depends obviously on, on people going to, you, to it. Do you get a sense that it is catching the imagination of the, of the people that you want to try and attract to it? A hundred percent, one hundred percent. You know, I think you had to be there to believe the atmosphere. You know, I've not been in a club <coughs> with that kind of atmosphere for a long, long time and feel safe. Of you course. know, there Can was I... a lot of emotions kicking out, k around. The the, 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 the MC, the ta very, very talented MCs, they were getting very emotional and, and it, it was good fun. You know, it was good, good fun. And every, everybody that was there, they, everybody enjoyed it. Everybody was clapping and cheering people on. Everybody was getting involved. It's a, it was a perfect place for you to see your child and to see, even if your child wants to get involved in music, you know, mm -hmm. that that's a terrific showcase. But for them. Can I just add that there was people here that hadn't talked to each other for years that had issues with each other, all solved because of this event. Like the, everybody focuses on the negative, but man, there is so much positive that can come from events like this. It was, I, I'm not, yeah, it was brilliant. It was, yeah, it was. <laughs> well, it's really good to talk to you both, and I wish you all the luck in the world with with uh, with the club night and 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 your future work, Terence, Alexander. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.